Okay, so welcome back to this next video in the Theory of Probability playlist. In this video, what we're going to do uh, is talk about the relation between the exponential distribution and the gamma distribution. Okay, so if we uh, go back to our uh, probability, if we go back to our uh, email email situation. So if you uh, haven't watched the previous videos on the Poisson process and uh, the connection between the exponential and the uh, Poisson distribution, you probably need to watch those before watching this. Remember that we have this, uh, we, we are waiting for emails to arrive and um, we have uh, loads of different possibilities. So if we just put pink dots where the emails arrive, then every single possibility for how emails can arrive uh, is going to be uh, within a great big probability space. So this probability space contains every possibility for how emails can arrive on the interval zero to infinity, basically. So there is the possibility that absolutely no emails ever arrive. Uh, that's one outcome. Uh, there is the possibility that one email arrives in your entire uh, lifetime or whatever in the entire interval zero to infinity and it can arrive obviously in loads of different uh, times uh, so all of those are separate outcomes then there's two three four etc and uh, we know that the expected rate at which they are going to arrive the average rate at which they arrive is a lambda so um, for instance if uh, if we're if we are writing our times down in minutes, say one minute, two minute, three minute, etc., then lambda would be how many emails you would expect to receive in a minute. So it's the rate, basically, uh, the, exp the average rate that emails arrive. So if you uh, say the uh, expect to receive three emails in a minute, uh, then uh, then that would then if you wanted to know how many emails you would expect to receive in say 45 minutes you would just times three by 45 uh, to get the uh, number of emails uh, you would expect to receive in 45 minutes so that's what lambda is it's just an expected or an average rate at which emails are going to arrive okay and uh, we discussed in the previous video that we can set up a random variable well we can set up a random variable x T, which is going to um, which is going to ascribe uh, you the number of emails that will arrive. Uh, so it's going to ascribe you the number of emails that arrive in the interval zero to t, basically. So uh, this is going to ascribe you. So x t is going to take every outcome and it's going to ascribe it the number of emails of emails which arrive in the interval zero to t, which arrive in the interval 0 to t, in 0 to t, okay? Uh, and it's probably closed there. So 0 to t. Okay, and we know that that can take on values 0, 1, 2, it could go on and on, but it has to take non-negative um, non integral values. And we know that it's going to be Poissonly distributed uh, with the expected number of emails to arrive in uh, that t t amount of time will obviously be the, expect the average rate at which they arrive times the amount of time t. Okay, now what we're going to say is we're going to superscript that random variable. We're going to call that the random variable x1t and we're going to create new random variables which is going to be x2t uh, and we, we can obviously go on. We can make x3, so, uh, x superscript 3t and I'm just going to tell you what x2 uh, subscript t is and then I'll show you what uh, the general one is, xi uh, t. Okay, so this one, x2t is going to ascribe to each outcome the number of emails, so same as above, number of emails which arrive, and this is where it gets more complicated, which arrive not in the interval 0 to t, but arrive in the uh, interval from uh, the first email arriving to the second email, uh, sorry, no, fr from the time at which the first email arrives to that time plus t, so which arrive in, um, so let's say, uh, what should I call this, um, what should I call it, um, alpha, I'll call it alpha, to alpha plus t, and now alpha 
is the time at which the first email arrives. So alpha is going to vary basically. Alpha is going to be a function of what um, of what initial uh, input you put in, in which uh, on which original outcome you pick in this probability space. So if we imagine picking this one, this is going to be alpha, the point when the first email arrives. And then what you'll do is you'll go to alpha plus t and you will ascribe this outcome, the number of emails which arrive within that interval. And obviously you do not count alpha. So you do not count this first email. You ask how many emails arrive in the open interval from the side alpha to the closed interval, the side alpha plus t. So half open, half closed, basically. Uh, so that's what you ascribe to every outcome. So you can do that. For every outcome in here, you can work out what this is. Uh, yes, OK, alpha is not some fixed constant. Alpha is going to vary as you go through the different outcomes. But this function is perfectly well defined, OK? And this function is going to still be Poissonly distributed with uh, parameter lambda t. So x two t is also going to be Poissonly distributed with uh, parameter lambda t. Okay. So uh, this effectively, the, this effectively is this is this one, but uh, where you are doing it from the time where you received no emails, basically. Okay, uh, so why is this Poissonly distributed lambda t? Well, you are asking you are asking how many emails are going to arrive in this interval, which is still length t. We would still expect lambda t emails to arrive in there because the time interval is still t and the average rate is still lambda. So the average, the expected value, would be lambda of t. And the exact same argument that we used originally for the Poisson process of splitting this up and taking the limit of the binomials, basically, that holds uh, for this. So this one is still going to be Poissonly distributed, and it can obviously take values 0, 1, 2, 3, non-negative integral values. Now we're going to go on. We're going to define x i t, which again is going to map you onto non-negative integral values, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And the way it's going to work is x i t is going to map each outcome onto the number of arrivals, of arrivals um, in the interval, let's say, what should I say now, in, um, it's going to be alpha but it's going to be alpha i minus 1 to alpha i minus um, 1 uh, plus t. Okay, uh, so where alpha i minus 1 is equal to the ith i minus 1th email to arrive. Okay, so x2 t was the uh, was ascribing you the number of emails which arrive in the interval from the first email arriving to the first email plus t. Now what we're doing in the ith case is we're saying take the i minus oneth email. So um, let's give you an example. So here is the uh, here is the time interval zero to infinity. Let's say you have some emails arriving here. So let's say here's an email, here's an email, here's an email, here's an email. Let's say we are looking at the x six here. So in that case, you would go you would go through uh, to the fifth email arriving. So one, two, three, four, five, and you would say, okay, draw the interval that interval plus t. So go to that uh, the time when the uh, fifth email arrived to that time plus t and ask how many emails arrive in there. That is what this function is going to ascribe you. And basically, what I hope to convince you is that they are all Poissonly distributed lambda t. No matter what i you pick, they are all Poissonly distributed lambda t. Because again, the exact same argument for the Poisson process holds. Um, and the expected number of emails you would receive in that interval is still the expected, uh, sorry, the average uh, rate at which emails arrive times the amount of time uh, you uh, look for, uh, look at the emails for. Okay, so that is how these uh, random variables are going to be distributed. Okay, so now what we did in the um, previous video is we saw the connection between the exponential and uh, the uh, and the um, Poisson distribution. So we set up a random variable which we called, and now I'll have to move this up, which we call big W, which ascribes to every single, every single, um, every single outcome the amount of time you had to wait to get the first interval. So ascribe, uh, sorry, the first email. So it ascribes to each outcome the time at which the first email arrives. So it ascribes you a positive uh, real number, basically. And we saw that it was going to be uh, 
we saw it was going to be exponentially distributed. So we saw that the probability uh, that uh, w um, is less than or equal to little w. So we saw that the probability that this uh, cumulative density function, the CDF of this probability distribution here, is going to be equal to one minus e to the negative lambda uh, little w there, basically. And the way that we did that is we said, okay, uh, well, the CDF, the probability that big W is less than or equal to little w, is equal to 1 minus the probability that big W is greater than little w. And if we want to know what is the probability that big W is greater than little w, that is asking what is the probability that the uh, first email uh, doesn't arrive until after time little w. And that is in fact equal to the probability that you receive no emails on that interval uh, 0 to w. So let me draw a picture. Here's 0, here's w. We want the probability that uh, that big W, the time at which the email arrives, is less than or equal to little w. So that's that, and um, slash that. And we've said that that is 1 minus the probability that big W is greater than little w, which is uh, that the first email arrives in the green interval over there. Now, if the first email arrives in the green interval there, that means that absolutely no emails arrive on the interval 0 to w. So if we make t equal to w, if we may look at the random variable x1w now, uh, that will tell us the number of emails that arrive in this interval from 0 to w, basically. Okay, and uh, we want the probability that that random variable is equal to 0. And if we uh, then apply the fact that we know it's Poissonly distributed, with parameter lambda w. So let's go down here, basically, because it's getting a bit crowded up here. Okay, so if we apply the fact that uh, the probability that x1w is equal to 0 is going to be Poissonly distributed with parameter lambda, and now t is w, uh, so um, we're going to uh, put in that um, we'll have uh, e to the negative lambda w times lambda w to the power of 0, because 0 is the number of emails we're uh, asking for, divided by 0 factorial. Now, to the power of 0 gives you 1 there, divided by 0 factorial gives you 1, that's just going to be equal to e to the negative lambda w, okay? And that, uh, if you plug that in up here, uh, back up here for the probability that big W is greater than little w, we get the CDF for uh, the, um, we get this CDF up here basically, which is the CDF uh, for, well, uh, it's the CDF for the exponential distribution. Now, again, just like I generalized this random variable here, I'm now going to generalize this random variable big W. So I'm going to call that uh, W1, basically. And now what I'm going to do is create some more random variables. So uh, let's create the ith W, and I'll tell you exactly what the ith W is. Okay, and again, it's going to map you onto positive real numbers. Okay, and the way it's going to work is it's going to map you it's going to uh, map any outcome s onto uh, the amount of time, the amount of time, amount of time, of time uh, between, uh, sorry, between uh, the uh, i minus oneth email, i minus oneth email, and the ith email, and ith email. So in a way, W1 was mapping you onto the distance between the 1 minus 1th email, the 0 of email, i.e. time 0, and the first email, 1. So I've generalized it now and said WI is going to map you, uh, but, uh, you onto the distance, the uh, time interval, the amount of time between the i minus 1th email and the i-th email. So if I, we draw a picture, here is 0, and we have some emails arriving here. So this is some outcome in this great probability space. And we want to know what is W, let's say, 6, going to map this onto. Well, it's going to be the time between the fifth, which is this email here, and the sixth email here. So we want to know what's that time difference there. That is what WI is going to map you onto, basically. Okay, now if we want to work out the probability, uh, if we want to work out how these, these random variables are distributed, we're going to follow a very similar technique to working out W1 and we'll go over that in the next video.